convergent boundaries form when two plates move toward each other. And there are three scenarios that can play out. When two oceanic plates converge, we call that ocean-ocean convergence. When two oceanic plates come together, it's hard to tell which one will lose and get pushed down. But for sure, one will always lose. And the losing plate will bend and slide beneath the other plate along an inclined zone called a subduction zone. And the whole process is called subduction. An oceanic trench forms as the subducting plate bends down and sediment and slices of oceanic crust collect in the trench forming a wedge that's called an accretionary prism. An accretionary prism continues to grow over time because material is continually added as subduction progresses. Trenches tend to be very deep oceanic features, much of which has to do with the bending of that subducting plate. One well-known example of this feature is the Marianas Trench in the Western Pacific. As the plate subducts, its temperature increases, releasing water from minerals in the oceanic crust, and this water causes melting in the overlying asthenosphere. This is because the presence of water significantly lowers the melting temperature of rocks, and the resulting magma from all this melting is more buoyant and rises to the overlying plate. At the start of subduction, some magma will erupt under the ocean, but as subduction progresses, magma will erupt from volcanoes that rise above the sea. With continued activity, you end up with multiple volcanoes along the plate boundary that form a curving belt of islands called an island arc. Magma that cools and solidifies at depth adds to the volume of the crust, and over time the crust gets thicker and oceanic islands can actually join to become more continuous strips of land. When an oceanic plate and a continental plate converge, it's called an ocean continent convergence. And along this boundary, the denser oceanic plate subducts beneath the more buoyant, less dense continental plate. An oceanic trench marks the plate boundary and receives sediment from the adjacent continent. This sediment and material scraped off the oceanic plate form an accretionary prism. Volcanoes form on the surface of the overriding continental plate in the same way the volcanoes form in an ocean-ocean convergent boundary. These volcanoes erupt often violently, producing large amounts of volcanic ash, lava, and mud flows. Magma forms by melting of the asthenosphere above the subduction zone. It can solidify at depth, rise into the overlying continental crust before solidifying, or reach the surface and cause a volcanic eruption. Compression associated with the convergent boundary deforms and thickens the overriding continental crust. Uplift and volcanism can produce very high mountain ranges like the Andes. When two continental plates converge, it's called continent-continent collision or continental collision. And this type of boundary creates big mountain ranges. Continental collisions typically start as ocean-continent convergence. As the oceanic part of the plate continues to subduct, the two continents will become closer and closer to each other. Magmatic activity occurs in the overriding plate above the subduction zone, and the edge of the approaching continent has no such activity because it is not a plate boundary yet. When the convergent continent does arrive to the subduction zone, it may partially slide under the other continent, or it may just clog up the subduction zone as the two continents collide. Because the two continents are thick and have the same density, neither can easily subduct beneath the other, let alone into the asthenosphere. So along the boundary, faults slice up the continental crust, stacking one slice on top of another on top of another. These slices are distinct from the accretionary prism that formed along the convergent boundary prior to the actual continental collision. Continental collisions form enormous mountain belts and high plateaus like the Himalaya and the Tibetan Plateau.